All right. Yay. We're all here doing yoga together. So um, you can leave your socks on for right now if you want, because we'll be using them pretty much right away. Um, and then again, in a little bit. So I'm gonna put mine on now just cause. Fancy socks. And if you have something comfortable to sit on, um, you can grab a cushion or if you have a yoga block, you can sit up on that too. Um, we're not gonna be um, meditating too long today cause we're gonna get straight to moving. But you know, I still want you to be comfortable. <clears throat> so get your socks on and get comfy. So you can uh, sit cross-legged. If that doesn't feel good for you, you can also just uh, sit on your knees or you can lay down on your back. And close your eyes. And we'll start with a little bit of meditation. And while you're focusing on the breath, just let your body relax. Maybe this is the first, you know, active practice you've had in a while and that little voice in your head might be telling you different things. <laughs> but just try to let that go so that you can come at this practice without any expectations. And you can just be present. So take a really nice deep breath, fill up your belly. And open up the mouth, let it go with a let go of something. Another deep breath in, fill up your chest. Open up the mouth, let it go completely. Shoulders dropping down. Last time, deep breath, fill the belly, fill the chest, and hold it there at the top for three, two, one. And open up the mouth, let it go completely, relaxing into your seat. From here, lift the eyebrows up and down a few times, releasing any tension in the forehead. Relaxing the cheeks. And then open up the mouth wide and stretch out the jaw. If you're anything like me, you can hold a lot of tension there. So take a minute, really, really get at it. And when you feel ready, you can just come to a place of stillness. And today our focus is going to be on inversions. So that sounds maybe scary, but basically all it means is that our head will be lower than our heart. And what's great about inversions is that no matter what's going on in life, the minute you get into an inversion, it's like nothing else exists. The only thing that there is is that moment when you're upside down, so it helps to get, um, help us to get a new perspective on things. It helps us to flip our, um, our view. And even literally um, with my ex-boyfriend, whenever we'd get in a fight, he'd be like, you need to go do a headstand. And I'd be like, you need to shut up. But then I would go do a headstand and I'm like, okay, yeah, I totally needed that moment to just let my, you know, my thoughts be wiped clear, like kind of like you're wiping away chalk from a chalkboard so that I can come back to, the argument or whatever it was we were talking about with a little bit more calmness, a little bit more centeredness. So hopefully today you might get a new tool for your toolbox so that in these times of uncertainty and instability, you can come back to your yoga practice and be like, I got this. So we'll sit for just a few more breaths here in quiet meditation. And if you notice your thoughts are wandering, know that that's okay, it's normal. But as soon as you do notice, try to guide yourself back to this moment. And if this is the first time you're joining me since um, studios closed or the private session stopped, my go-to mantra has been inhale, let exhale go. So if you wanna use that for the rest of the meditation, feel free. If you want to use that for the rest of your day, feel free as well. So just notice and then bring it back.
your hands together in front of your heart. And we'll start our practice today with three ohms. A really nice deep breath in, fill the belly up. Oh. 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 Yay! All right, you can open your eyes, and we're going to start straight in extended child's pose. So if you're on a block, move it out of the way. And then here. Open your knees as wide as the mat, bring your toes together, and then send your hips back, walk your hands forward. So cleaning your mat if you need to. Whenever I bring socks on my mat, things just get all crazy. There you go. So forehead to the mat. And try to let your chest sink down towards the floor. And if you're bigger chested, maybe you already touched the floor. But the idea is if you don't, try to let it just sink down. You can keep your palms on the earth here. Or bring your palms together. And then gently send your fingertips towards the ceiling over your head, kind of like a shark fin. And from here, walking your elbows forward a bit more and pulling your hips back so that your sit bones move towards your heels. You're going to feel a, like an opening through the triceps, maybe even through the shoulders. Oof. And then whenever I come back to yoga, my practice is like, girl, you're on your computer way too much. <laughs> and on top of it, I just re-downloaded an old video game that I used to play all the time. And I'm like, oh, Skyrim. <laughs> One more breath. For those of you who don't know, Skyrim is like a super immersive game where you can all of a sudden spend 500 hours in like two months doing nothing. <laughs> Release your palms to the earth, take a nice deep breath in, come up to all fours, wrists underneath shoulders, knees underneath hip joints, deep breath in. So cat cow, drop the belly, lift the heart, look up. Exhale round. Oh, and this is the time if you want to start the playlist, you can. The link is in the email. It's a nice active playlist today, if I do say so myself. Exhale, round. So pull your chin into your chest, push away from the mat, separate your shoulder blades. Inhale, tailbone lifts, belly drops. Look up. Only three today. Exhale, round. Now here comes some interesting stuff. This is why we have our socks on. So if you are on tiles or you're on um, hardwood flooring, just try to make sure that um, you're going with the grooves of the, um, the tile or the, the hardwood. So my hardwood goes this way, so I'm gonna stay like this. But if you're on your mat and your hardwood goes this way, just turn sideways. So for those of you who are set up like me, I'm gonna roll my mat up a little bit so that my hands, oh, you're gonna love me, but you're gonna hate me. So your hands are still on your mat, but your socks are on your floor. So take a nice deep breath in and lift your feet up. So you're hovering, you're on the tops of your feet. And these are called mountain climbers. So pull your knee into your chest slowly and then extend. So in and back. This is great for the feet, but you know, we're warming up our core. Oh, it's so, I was not ready for this. It's okay. So we want to do five on each side. So we should be able to do one more. So right knee in towards the chest, left leg goes back, left leg in towards the chest, right foot goes back. Then you can come back to the knee and you can extend out the mat again. You can take off your socks. Don't throw them too far away because we're going to use them again later in the same kind of a thing, but different. You're like, we kept our socks on just for that? Yeah, but look, I'm already out of breath. That's some hard work right there. Come up and over into your downward facing dog. Yay! Pedal your feet. Oh, this feels so good. So I'm bending one knee, then the other. And downward facing dog is considered an inversion in its own right because our head is lower than our heart. So let's take this first posture as an opportunity to switch things up. So maybe call to mind something that hasn't really gone the way you wanted to today or yesterday. Maybe try to see it from a different perspective. I know that can be hard 
because we get very set in our views of things. One more breath, shake your head a little bit left, right. Let that tension go. All right, deep breath in, come high up on the tippy toes. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. And on this first inhale, step to the front, lift halfway. And on the exhale, fold over the legs. Uttanasana, hands to the elbows and rock gently left to right. Crown of the head towards the earth so that you're looking at your knees. That way the back of the neck can totally release. One more deep breath. Relax your abdomen. Exhale, let your hands fall to the earth. Now push into your feet. I want you to root down. And as you rise up, roll up through your spine. So one vertebra at a time, ragdolling the hands and the head. Coming up to Tadasana Mountain Pose. This is a great opportunity if you need to fix your pants or your shirt, do that now. I'm going to do that. So hands at your heart now. Push your thumbs into your sternum. And I invite you to set your intention now for your practice. And a great way to do that is think about one thing that you want to invite into your life today. So not like, oh, next week, next month, next year. Just like, what do I want more of today? Is it peace? Is it laughter? Is it... Netflix, <laughs> like whatever it is, just set that intention. We're gonna make it happen today. So take a nice deep breath in, fill up with that idea. That that's what, you're gonna make it happen. And exhale out any of that negative self-talk. It's telling you that you don't deserve it or that you can't do it. Just like, nope, let go. Deep breath in, arms above the head, look up, stretch, push into your feet. And on the exhale, dive forward. So you're hinging over your hips, keeping the legs as straight as you can, and then release the crown of the head to the earth into Uttanasana, forward fold. Deep breath in, lift halfway. So we're preparing in Ardha Uttanasana. And on the exhale, plant the palms, step back to plank. Inhale in your plank and shift forward onto your tippy toes. Look forward. Exhale, lower down the knees, chest and chin. So booty up. Inhale, slide through onto the tummy, lift the shoulders, head moves forward. So this is Bhujangasana, baby cobra. Exhale, tuck your toes, send your hips back to your heels. Inhale here. Exhale, extend the legs. Adho Mukha Svanasana, or downward facing dog. Inhale, two, three, four, exhale. Two, three. Four. So start now with the places that are in contact with the earth. I want you to press in to like the balls of your thumb and your index finger so that your whole palm, all your finger pads are really pushing into the earth. Now think about your feet. Notice if you're dumping more weight into the pinky toes than the balls of the feet and try to equalize that. Try to push into every toe equally, into the ball of every toe equally. One more deep breath, extending those sits bones up towards the ceiling. So tilt your tailbone up just a little bit. You're going to feel your hamstrings pull. Or maybe that's just me. <laughs> One more breath. Exhale, let it go. And if at any point you need to take a break today, just come back to your child's pose. Inhale, high up on the toes. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, step to the front, lift halfway. So coming back into Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold over the legs. Keeping a nice soft bend. Inhale, push into the feet, reach the arms above the head, look up. Exhale, hands to heart. And we're gonna do this one a little faster. So inhale, Urdhva Hasasana, lift your arms up. Exhale, dive forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the palms, step back to plank. Inhale here, shift forward, look forward. Exhale, bend the elbows, lower down halfway. So as if you want to tuck your elbows underneath your ribs, flip the feet. Inhale, extend the arms, chest moves forward, shoulders roll back, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Five breaths. Deep breath in to push the earth away from you, finding an external rotation through your biceps. And exhale to push your heels back towards the floor. Oh, it feels so good. Two more breaths. 
Mm -hmm. Last deep breath in, really trying to find that length through the lower back. So keep tilting those sit bones up. When you direct, so to push the backs of the uh, thighs towards like behind you, the end of the mat. Deep breath in, come up on the toes. Exhale to bend the knees and look forward. And this time, if you want to hop to the front of the mat, you can, but use your inhale to power you to the front, lift halfway. Exhale, fold over the legs. Deep breath in, arms above the head, look up. Exhale, hands to heart. Fix your pants if you need to. <laughs> Inhale here, keep your thumbs against your chest. Exhale, bend the knees, send the hips back, fingertips touch the earth. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Utkatasana, pull your knees back a little more. Shoulders drop away from the ears. Exhale, dive forward, hinge from the hips. Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And from here, you can either um, step back and lower down knees, chest, chin, or you can do Chaturanga, or you can jump back. But if you're going to jump, make sure you land in Chaturanga, so elbows bent when you land. Inhale for your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. It was like a piece of sand under my hand there. Like, oh, worst upward facing dog ever. Also, my pants are falling down. All right, turn your left toes out. Step your right foot between your hands. Square your hips, so pull back on your right hip crease. Inhale, sweep the arms up, warrior one. Exhale, open up for warrior two. And if you notice, I'm lengthening my leg because I like to um, realign my hips. because I like to lift my left hip, but we don't want that, so drop it. And then when you're ready, you can come back into your warrior two with your level hips. Deep breath in to lengthen your right leg. Reach your upper body forward. You might even get a nice hip crack out of this. Not today. Exhale. Trikonasana, so right fingertips to the earth. Left fingertips towards the ceiling. So while you're in this, use your inhale to think of pushing your sits bones towards the end of the mat and then pushing the crown of your head towards the front of the mat. So you're trying to get really long through your spine. All right, now while you're doing that, push into both feet. So push your right heel forward and push your left heel back. I know, one more breath. Your upper body is right over your extended leg. Inhale. Exhale, turn your head to look at the floor. Inhale, come back up to standing. Exhale, rebend the front knee. Ooh, yes. Five breaths here. So. Warrior two, make sure that hip isn't lifting, drop it down. And you want to keep your right knee over your ankle. So you don't want it falling in and you don't want it moving past. So you want to stack it. In the um, perfect world, we want to get the bottom of our thigh parallel to the earth. But it's okay to not be. Just go with what you feel. We're at the beginning of our practice. So if your thigh is already on fire, maybe think about having less of a deep warrior one, uh, two, sorry. Keep your shoulders over your pelvis. Some of us like to reach forward because we're active and we're going places, but pull it back. One more breath. Good. Inhale, straighten your front leg, take a break, relax your arm. Exhale, rebend the right knee, right elbow to the right thigh. Left fingers swing up and over. Oof. Extended side angle. Make sure you're not collapsing into your right shoulder. Your neck is long. And keep trying to drop your hips down. So sometimes we want to come into it kind of like triangle, like our hips are lifted. Try to really drop them so you get a nice straight line all the way from the left foot to the left fingertips. Right hand is active. One more breath. Exhale, turn your head to look at the floor. Plant the palms. Pivot on the back foot so you're coming into lunge. Deep breath in to lengthen the front leg. Now you can stay here on this wide-legged pyramid variation, or you can hop your left foot forward a bit to square the hips. If you have blocks and you want to use it here, you can, but you don't need to. Deep breath in to send your sits bones up and back, lengthen the crown of your head forward. Exhale, fold over that right leg. Inhale, push into your right heel. Exhale, tummy to thigh. 
Inhale to pull back on your right hip crease, left hip crease comes forward. Exhale, fold. Last time. Deep breath in, push into that left heel. Exhale, fold. Oof. Inhale, come forward, bending the right knee, come back onto the toes, lunge, proud chest. Exhale, step straight back to downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale. All right, turn the, the right toes out. Step the left foot between the hands. Take a second to pull your left hip crease back. So we don't want to have booty out to the side. We want booty facing the back. Deep breath in. Sweep the arms up in front of you. Coming into your warrior one. Push into the outer edge of your right foot. Exhale, open up. Warrior two. So straighten the right leg. Drop that hip down. Come back into your warrior two. All right, straighten the leg again. This time, send the hips back. Oh, that was a hip crack. It was a good one. Oh, I almost fell over because it was so good. All right, exhaling down into your Upita Trikonasana or extended triangle. So if you can see your screen, notice my shoulders aren't coming up towards my ears, but my neck is staying long. I'm pushing my shoulder blades down my back. Inhale. Exhale, maybe turning the chest a little more towards the right. And notice your right hand, you don't want it really far back. You want to make a T with your arm. So if you can't see your right hand, that means you got to bring it back a little bit. One more deep breath. Exhale, turn your head down to look at the toes. Push into the left foot, inhale, come back up, strong, strong front leg. Exhale, rebend the front knee coming into our warrior two. Now, if you want to lengthen the leg again to adjust your hips, making sure that they're um, level, you can do that. Just sinking down into that warrior two and also making sure that you have length through the lower back. You're not overarching. Keeping the knee over the ankle and keeping the shoulders down and away from the ears. And reach out with both hands so you're not just like, oh. This is off on my hands. No, but you're like, yes, I'm going front. I'm going back. I am a woman. Hear me roar in my warrior two pose. I just got really excited with my arms there. I don't know if you can see that. I was like, voguing while I in this. It was great. One more breath. <laughs> Inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, rebend the front knee. Bring your left um, elbow to your left thigh. Swing your right fingertips up and over. So this is, ooh, extended side angle. Let your hips dip. Keep your chin close to your chest here so the back of the neck stays long. Inhale. Exhale, twist your chest a little more towards the right. Two more breaths. And think about pushing into the back of the right foot, the edge of it, flexing your right butt cheek. One more breath. Exhale, turn your head to the floor, plant the palms down, pivot on the back toe. Inhale in your lunge, so drop the chest forward. Exhale, slide the left foot back, downward facing dog. All right, here comes some fun stuff. Deep breath in, roll into a plank. Now push into your right hand, bring it to center, roll over onto the sides of your feet, stacking them, lift the left fingertips up. So lift your hips as high as you can here. One more breath. Side plank, Vashistasana. Exhale, bring the left hand down. Walk it to the middle, pivot onto the seat on the other side, lifting up. Ooh, this one's harder for me. One more deep breath, push your hips up. Exhale, plant the palms. Inhale here in your plank, look forward. Exhale, lower down the knees, the chest, the chin. Inhale, slide onto the tummy, lift the shoulders up, look forward. Exhale, tuck the toes, send the hips back. Into modified child pose. Take one breath here. Exhale, extend the legs downward facing duck. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Two more breaths. Inhale, push into your hands. Separate your shoulder blades. Get really broad through your upper back. Pull the lower belly in. Last deep breath. 
And exhale. Good. Inhale high up on the toes. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. And then use your inhale to hop or step to the front, lifting halfway. Exhale, fold over the legs. Bend the knees, send the hips back. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Chair pose one last time. Exhale to standing. Hands at your heart. You feeling warmed up? I'm feeling warmed up. All right, let's just keep going. I'll stop being ridiculous. No, I won't. Inhale, arms above the head. Look up. Exhale, dive forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. So prepare for what version you're going to do. Right now, I'm going to step back and lower down Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. So pull your shoulders back. Care bear your chest forward. Exhale, downward facing dog. Oh, this is where we get into the really fun stuff. Okay, so we're doing some drills. Like what? There's not supposed to be drills in yoga. There is if you want to prepare for what we're preparing for. All right, so downward facing dog. And I want you to shorten your dog a bit. So walk like two inches forward. And then slowly drop your elbow down. Actually, I want you to lengthen your down dog, not shorten. So walk your feet back a little more. Coming into dolphin pose. If this hurts, you can come onto your knees and just send your hips back. But we just want to work on opening the chest and the shoulders. If your head hits, you can just rest your head on the ground. And then push your right elbow up, left elbow up, come back up to downward facing dog. Two breaths here. So keep separating your shoulder blades. Last deep breath in. And then on your exhale, drop the left elbow down and the right elbow down, coming back into golf. Inhale. Exhale, push into your elbows, separate your shoulder blades. Last one. Exhale, and then on this time, on your inhale, lift the right elbow, lift the left elbow coming into downward facing dog. Inhale, high up on the toes. Exhale, lower down to the knees, send the hips back. Bring the hands behind you, forehead on the ground, palms up. So really let your shoulders roll forward here. Take a break. We're really working on opening up the chest, warming up the shoulders. Oh, we're coming into some fun stuff now. You're going to hate me. Okay. So now come up onto your knees. Come back to seated. We need the socks again for this. Now it's up to you. I'm going to show you um, a little, like a harder variation of the drills we did before. So you can decide. You can either do this one or you can go back to the plank ones that we were doing at the beginning. So, first things first is I want to show you how to place your hands and your arms safely for headstand. We're not actually going into headstand today unless it's part of your practice already. We're just doing preparation for it so that we can just flip upside down a little bit. So you can keep your feet on the ground. We just want to slowly build our skill set towards that inversion. So first thing I want you to do, sitting up, is grab hold of the outsides of your arms. So I want you to be able to really hold on to your arms. And then from there, bring your elbows to the ground. This is how far apart your elbows should be for a headstand. They should not be farther apart. So keeping your elbows where they are, release your hands and then interlace your fingers, but open up your palms so that there's like a hammock for the back of your head. Now, a lot of people ask me, where on my head do I touch the floor? And it's different for everybody, but it's somewhere between the hairline and the, the crown. So it's not the crown, it's not the forehead. There's like a two, three inch space, I don't know if you can see that because my hair is ridiculous, um, where it would be perfect for you. So you'll know. I'm going to take out my ponytail so you can see what I'm doing. So elbows, touch them, grab hold of the outside, interlace those fingers, open up your hammock, thumbs pointing up, and then find that perfect spot. But the idea is you want the back of your neck straight. So you don't want to have like a super big curve. So I found my spot, 
Now, all we're going to do is push into our elbows so that our head lifts up and then release. Inhale, push into your elbows, lift your head off the ground. So you should really feel this in your, in your upper back and your shoulders and then release down. Lift up, push off the floor, lift your head and then come down. So you can keep practicing that just to get that idea, that muscle memory in your shoulders. Now, if you want to go a little bit deeper, you're comfortable with that, first push up. So you're not actually lifting your head off the floor, but you're keeping that feeling of lifting your shoulders up. And then you can tuck your toes and stay here. So I'm like a headstand downward facing dog. But really keep pushing your elbows down. And if you wanted to, you'd be able to lift your head up off the ground so that barely any weight is in your head. It's all in your elbows. So maybe walking your toes closer towards your face and then back. But again, pushing into your elbows. One more breath, wherever you are. And then on your exhale, lower to your knees, send your hips back, forehead to the ground, hands go behind you, palms to the ceiling. Relaxing your shoulders. You can even rock your head left and right a little bit. Ooh, we're gonna have fun. So the next um, drill we're gonna do um, can get you into a tuck headstand, but I wanna stress, don't jump. If you have to jump, that means that your body isn't ready for this posture. So I want you to be safe. So don't jump, try your best. And if you can't get up with the strength of your abdominal muscles, it just means you need to work a little bit more to do it safely. That's number one. It's not about that Instagram photo you wanna get, but doing something safely so that it can become part of your practice forever and you can work on it, you can build on it. Yeah, all right. If you don't wanna get into this at all, you can come into child's pose, you can hold downward facing dog, you can do dolphin to work your muscles, like there's many different options. But I'm gonna cue for um, the tuck one. So you can watch for this. You don't actually have to be doing it with me. Make sure your shoulders, um, your, sorry, your elbows are right under your shoulders. You can touch your triceps. Get your little basket for your head, thumbs up. Find your perfect spot. And then lift up onto the toes. And now you slowly want to walk your feet towards your face until you can just gently lift one foot off the ground and then the other. So this is a tuck. This you can hold for like three breaths if you can, but I want you to still push into your elbows. And when you're ready, bringing one foot down and then the other, coming to your knees and back into child's pose. So again, don't hop. You wanna be able to do it with control. And if you just wanna lift one foot at a time and then put it down and then the other foot and put it down, that works the core, that builds strength. All right, and if those of you who want to see, I'll just do it so you can see the progression. Setup is always the same. Hands on elbows, grabbing the outside, interlacing the fingers, getting that forehead placement so it's not right on the forehead, it's not right on the crown, it's that in-between place. Push into the elbows, lift up to the toes. So once, say you've mastered Ooh, can I get it? There we go. The tuck. To get up to um, straight, first you want to send your knees towards the ceiling, feet back, so that you can push your pelvis forward. And then from there, extend the legs up. So my butt cheeks are flexed right now. My toes are flexed. My quads are flexed. I'm pushing my elbows into the earth like crazy. And when I want to come down, you can either come down one foot at a time, or you can come down the way you came up, but always take a break after. And if you're still in child's pose, if you decided like, I'm just gonna take child's pose here, that's cool. We will all meet in child's pose. Even if you're in your headstand and it's part of your practice, just come on down and we'll meet there. I decided not to, um, I was gonna show you like this crazy variation, but I'm like, this is level, this is yoga floor one. I shouldn't be doing crazy variations. So you can take your socks off. I'm sorry, I made you put the bag on. <laughs> All right. We're coming into our forward fold of the practice. 
I thought we'd start with wide-legged forward fold because it feels so nice. Uh, open up your legs as wide as you can, but without allowing your toes to point backwards. You want them to be able to basically point straight up. Walk your sit bones back even more. Oh my goodness. And before even starting, I want you to play with your pelvis tilt, your pelvic tilt. So roll back so that you're rounding and you feel gross and this looks weird. And then sit up nice and tall, send your sits bones back. Right away, you might feel that pull in your inner groin and the hamstring. So round and then come back up. And now that you're up, stay here. Flex your toes back, heels move forward. Deep breath in, push your sits bones into the mat, lift the crown of your head up. So imagine that your spine is just being pulled and on your exhale, hinge from the hips. So we're not rounding. Think of this as your hips and this is your spine, these are your legs. You're going down like this. Oh, I know. So relax your face. Relax your shoulders. And think about this as your, as your belly coming towards the ground rather than your forehead coming to the ground. So leading with your heart, this is coming forward. And work with every breath. So use an inhale to get long, push those sits bones down. Exhale to go a bit further. Really focusing on keeping that back straight. Shoulders are pulling not up here, but they're down and away from the ears. Your neck is long. Now I'm on my elbows, but if you're, just know that if you're here and you're feeling it, that's good. We just want to feel it. Some people have more flexibility built up than others. Some people are just born with more flexibility. So wherever you are in your forward fold, don't feel like you're less than in it. Just be like, this is where I'm at. I'm amazing. I'm rocking it because I'm doing it with respect for my body. I'm listening to what it needs. Check back in with your feet. Make sure you're still pulling your toes back. If you're not sure, you can always lift your heels. Ooh, that adds an extra oomph to things. If you want to extend the arms out in front of you, maybe trying to get the tummy to the ground. Again, working with the breath and working with where your body is. Two more breaths. I just realized how much I have to vacuum my floor by looking in between the cracks of the floorboards. Mm -hmm. One more breath, but no judgment. It's just a fact. <laughs> Exhale, fold. Oh, that's good. Inhale, walk your hands back towards your body. Lift them above your head. Take a nice stretch. Ah, exhale, bring your hands down. Slowly bring your feet into center now. And walk your sits bones back. Actually, I'm going to make sure I'm back far enough that my feet don't get off. Get cut off. If you have a strap with you and you want to um, put a strap around your feet, you can do that. But I'm just going to go for straight up Paschimottanasana. So same as before, push your sits bones down into the mat as you lift the crown of your head towards the ceiling. Arms up, look up, find that great length, pull your toes back, and on your exhale, fold over your legs, releasing your hands whenever you notice your back is rounding. So if you're like me and you have really tight hip flexors, you might feel like they're going to cramp. So just take a minute, give them a massage, come back. You might also want to bend your knees slightly for this. Um, and if you're here and you're having a hard time keeping your back straight, just sit up on a block so that you're lifting your hips higher than your knees. That actually really helps to um, open up the hips a bit. If you're able to grab for your toes without rounding, feel free to do that. But again, be honest with yourself. Are you rounding? And if you are, just let go and come back up. Don't let the ego um, come into this factor. This is, this is all about you know, serving you about self-care. And when we let the ego tell us what to do, that's like the opposite of self-care because it makes us feel like we're not good enough and it makes us feel like we should be doing better, et cetera, et cetera. But if we listen to our bodies, it's like, you, know, you are enough. This is perfect. This is exactly what you need. I prefer to listen to that voice. That voice is nicer. <laughs> One more breath. So think about pushing your sits bones down. See, I just found like two inches of length there. And then fold. Ooh. Inhale, arms above the head. Look up. Find that stretch. And exhale, hands to the earth. Ah. All right, I'm going to face this way. Bend into the right knee. 
and then step the right foot over the left leg. You can stay up on your block if you want to, but flex your um, left toes. If you can and you want to bend into your um, left knee to come into the full expression, just make sure both of your sits bones are touching. I just, I guess I'll stay like this. Push into the ball of your right foot. Deep breath in, push your sits bones down, get tall. Exhale, twist to the right. So you can either hold on to your knee with your arm or you can hook your elbow. Looking over your right shoulder. Now check in with your right hand. Make sure you're not leaning really hard into it. It's just there to keep, you know, a little bit of balance. So inhale, sit up tall, push your sits bones down. Exhale, twist, looking over that right shoulder. Pull your navel in towards your spine. Two more breaths. Exhale, twist. Last one, deep breath in, sit up tall. Exhale, twist. Good, inhale back to center, arms up. Exhale, release, and we'll right away go to the other side. So there's no need for a counter twist. Just give your knees um, a little love if they hurt. Bend into your left knee. Step it over your right thigh and set up. So you can either keep your right um, leg extended or you can bend into it coming into the full expression. If you're larger in the chest, this is harder, just like from someone who knows. Um, so don't feel bad if you can't get as deep this way. It's all a practice, right? Push into your sit bones, lift up. Exhale, twist to the left. Either hooking or wrapping your arm around. Not dumping too much weight into that left hand. Think lightness. If you just have like a really big meal, that might be hard to think lightness in this uh, moment, but the idea. Deep breath in, sit up nice and tall, push your sits bones down. Exhale, twist. Ooh. <laughs> Making old man voices over here. Ooh. Two more breaths. Exhale, pull your navel and make space. Last one. Exhale, twist. So delicious. Inhale, back up. Reach. And on the exhale, twist to the right. We will do a counter twist on this side. Just so that we can release. Extend both legs out. Give them a shimmy. Give them a shake. And move forward so that your bum is in the middle of your mat because we're going to be laying down now. All right. So bend the feet. Bend the feet. Bend the knees. Feet on the floor. Coming into a short Navasana. Only five breaths. <laughs> only five breaths. Palms up. Nice and long through the spine. So lift your heart and slowly slide your toes towards your sit bones and then lift your shins parallel to the floor. Inhale. Exhale, back is nice and straight. Belly is nice and strong. Inhale. Your jaw is relaxed. Exhale. Two more breaths if you want. You can extend your legs. I'm not there today. My hand uh, flexibility has gone down a lot over the past couple weeks. So I'm just going to work my core. That's cool. One more breath. Lift your heart. And on your exhale, together, extend your legs and slowly start coming down to five. Four. Can you hear my voice trembling? Three. Two. One. And just hold and lift your arms above your head and hold here for a second. Hold, 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 hold. hold. Bite your toes. Flex your butt cheeks. And exhale, release to the ground. Oh, it's so good. Bring your feet together. Open your knees. Hands on your elbows and take a rock. Massaging out the lower back. Doing anything that feels good. So I'm actually like rounding my lower back a little bit just to get into all the sticky spots in there. Some of you know I broke my back when I was young. I have like nerve damage and stuff. So sometimes I have to do a few extra things to just, you know, get my body right and ready for a back bend. So walk your heels in towards your sits bones. And if today you're, you're like, I'm done, I'm exhausted, all of that like dolphin stuff and headstand stuff, over it. you can take a restorative um, bridge pose by placing a block or a book underneath your, your sacrum, like so. But just make sure if you are taking restorative that you still walk your shoulders underneath your heart so you can find that openness through the heart. All right, but if not, you want to join me for bridge, walk your heels in just enough so that you can touch your heels with your sit bones. Turn your toes in just a wee bit. On your next breath in, lift your lower back, your middle back, and your upper back. So this is me without using my lips. I'm barely lifting at all. 
Walk your shoulders underneath your chest, interlace your fingers, and then push into your feet, especially the balls of the toes. And you'll notice like, oh my God, how much more lift you can get. Extend your fists towards your heels and keep pushing up. Two more breaths. Exhale, push into the balls of the feet, squeeze the thighs in towards the midline. Last one. Exhale, release the hands. First, untuck the shoulders and then lower down, upper middle, lower back. Walk the feet as wide as the mat and then windshield wiper your knees left to right slowly. And just notice how that feels. Notice how your back feels because this is your opportunity now to make the call. Do you want to do a second bridge or do you want to take a restorative bridge? So we're only doing two back bends today. So it's up to you. One more balancing left and right. Now my clavicle or my collarbone is hurting today. So I'm actually I'll a cue for a regular bridge, but I'm going to take a restorative just because I'm trying to, you know, practice what I preach, listen to my body. So for those of you who want to do a nice bridge pose, walk your heels in towards your sits bones. And then when you're ready, take a deep breath in, lift your lower back, middle back and upper back. Walk your shoulders underneath your chest, just a little bit, interlacing the fingers and extending the arms if that's possible, imagining that you're reaching your fists towards your heels. Now turn your attention towards your thighs. Just imagine that there's a block in between them and you're trying to squeeze it so that it doesn't fall. Your thighs aren't touching, but you're getting that like internal squeeze. So you're activating all those muscles on the insides of your thighs, pushing into the balls of the foot. One more breath, maybe lifting up onto the tippy toes. And on the exhale, release the hands and you can untuck the shoulders. If you're on a block, you can slowly remove it and lower down all the way. This time, bring the soles of the feet together, open up the knees, left hand on your heart, right hand on your belly. And just take a moment here. In Supta Baddha Kanasana, you find cobbler's pose. And just feel that support of the mat underneath you. Just like, oh, no matter how crazy things get out there, we always have our yoga practice to come back to. And even in itself, sometimes that can be stressful, like coming back to a practice after a while. I know that I definitely haven't been practicing as much as I was before everything got shut down. Um, and sometimes there can be guilt, you know, associated with that, but try to let it go. Just the fact that you're here on your mat right now, it's like, oh, that is 100. Mm, I just want to hug you and high five you. And if you weren't able to make it for the live and you end up watching this like in two months, I high five you in the future. Boom. <laughs> oh, you can just call me Marty McFly. Inhale your knees back to center. Shout out all to my 80s people there. So now we are going to come into our Viparita Karani or legs up pose. So you can take a cushion or you can take your block, whatever you have nearby that you can use to lift your hips a little higher. This is also considered an inversion. So deep breath in, push into your feet, slide that prop underneath your lower back. This is like my favorite. Um, if you're close to a wall, I'll actually demo it, and you want to use the wall, because in Sanskrit, this translates to legs up the wall pose. I'm actually going to go at it the other side. So what you want to do is get your hip really close to the wall, shoulder really close to the wall, and then slowly send your feet up, keeping your bum as close to the wall as you can. Oh, I got a shimmy a little closer. There we go. And then from here, you just relax. Uh -huh. So if you're um, if you have your legs up against the wall, amazing. If you don't, amazing. But try to keep a soft bend in your knees because we don't want to put over stress any stress on them. We want to feel a relax here. Um, you can also extend your arms up towards the ceiling, relaxing the wrists. So you can stay here with the legs extended straight towards the sky, or you can let the feet. Open up, coming into like a middle split. I'm slowly like moving away from the wall. In this here, I'm just gonna get my back off the wall. And right now, this isn't about increasing flexibility. This isn't about like, okay, I wanna really try to work my splits. It's like, no, this is a relaxing, this is a restorative. 
Um, so you can put your hands on your thighs if you're in the split, but not pull. Just let the weight of your hands help guide your feet a little closer to the floor. Help that release a little bit. If the split doesn't feel good, you can also try bringing the soles of the feet together to come into Supta Baddha Konasana legs. For me, this is like, nope, because my hips don't work that way very well. So I prefer um, the legs up or the middle split, but it's really up to you, whatever feels best. Two more breaths here. And if on your last breath you want to do a couple circles with your ankles, if your arms are up, maybe do a couple circles with your wrists. And then you can slowly bend the knees and bring the soles of the feet back to the earth. And if you're up against a wall, do the same thing, bend the knees, but then slowly roll over onto one of your sides. I chose the right so that you can make it back onto your mat. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so we're all on our backs now. Bring your knees up into your chest and rock a little bit left or right. Oh, that feels so good. So this is amazing, one, just because it feels good. Um, but this also, it helps with digestion. Um, we're compressing the internal organs so it can help us like, you know, Work out any digestive issues, and it also um, massages the kidneys. It can help them drain a little bit better. You know, and our kidneys do a lot of work, so props to you, my kidneys. And then from here, let your knees fall towards the left side, opening up the arms in the right, Ar arm to the right. But really keep your knees close to your chest here. Don't let them drop below your hips, because once you do that, you're not really twisting the back. Like we want to get into this in the thoracic um, vertebra. So our middle and upper back. Ah, and just let that right shoulder sink down. Make sure the breath is still deep and nourishing. Relaxing every muscle through the spine so that you can sink into this little mouth. Two more breaths. Relax the jaw. The last one, deep breath in, fill your chest. And exhale, let it go. Deep breath in to bring the knees back to center. Rock a little bit and recenter yourself on your mat if you need to. I'm going to. And then when you're ready, you can let the knees fall to the right. So I like to go all the way to the right first so that I make sure my knees are where they, I want them to be. And then I extend my arm out. And sometimes my left shoulder does not hit the floor on the first breath, so don't force it down. We're here for five breaths. You have time to let it release. If it's really far, like more than four inches away, then you can put a block or a blanket or even a towel underneath it, just so you have a bit of support. But just like, you know, in any posture, know that we usually hold it for a few breaths, so you don't have to be at 100% that first breath. Use every breath to get you closer to your maximum. And that maximum can change every day. And know that that's normal and that's okay. Some days you feel stronger than others. Some days you're more flexible. Some days you're feeling under the weather. And so everything is fine. Like exactly how it is right now, that's your yoga practice is perfect for what you need right now. And P.S., I think I'm saying that to myself as much as I'm saying it to you. <laughs> Truth bombs. Inhale back to center. Pull those knees up into your chest. Oh, my God, a huge best bunny just followed me on that. Where did that come from? <laughs> All right, so if there's any last postures you want to come into, um, maybe one more back bend, maybe happy baby, feel free to do it. <laughs> not just rock a little bit more back and forth working out any final kinks in your back before we head into our shavasana and when you feel ready take a nice deep breath Thank you. 
moms from the ceiling. And gently lift your shoulder blades under your hands. I'm not so much that we all do from the outside, which is that we find a little bit of in this. Once again, I was doing the reading of the piece of the note. Oh. 
And we'll close our practice today with three ohms. So you can bring your hands together in front of your heart. Take a nice deep breath in. Oh. Namaste. <laughs>